This is week 17 of our In Him Scripture study. I want to encourage you, go back to June the 21st of 2021 and start this scripture study from from the beginning and go down this list with us. You know, you can go to our website and download this list and do it on your own. You don't have to listen to the podcast, but, but I encourage you to listen to the podcast because we're going through this list scripture by scripture. And when you start finding out who God says you are through Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, it'll change your life. It'll put you in a place that the devil can't get to you. Now, I want, I want to take just a minute and, and, and say something. Partners, thank you for all that you're doing, sowing into this ministry, helping us do what we're doing, what we've been commissioned by God to do, and that is to give His Word away free of charge to anybody that will listen. You understand this today that you are helping make it possible for people all over this planet to be set free from the religious bondage that, that religion will put on people when they don't know what God says they are, when they don't know who God says they are. The majority of this, of this nation don't know who God says they are. Why? Because they don't know God's Word. And that's what this study's all about, is to teach them who God says they are, not who, what tradition or what their, their lifestyle says they are. Because I assure you something, if, if you will, if you'll find out who you are in Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, your lifestyle will change. I don't have to get on here and, and jump up and down and, and, and tell you how, what your relationship with God is. It, I don't know what your relationship with God is. It's not my place, but I'm sure not going to get on in here and shame you and condemn you for, for, uh, not doing as I do. All I want you to understand is if you will take God's Word and rightly divide it like the Bible talks about and get in to who God says that you are, it'll change the outlook on your life. It will change you when you find out who Jesus Christ has made you to be. It will change you to a place that you can look around and see situations come up in your life and think, no, I, that ain't going to happen in me. I know who I am. I know who God says I am. I'm not believing the devil's lies ever again. See, there's a difference. There's a difference in somebody that knows who they are and somebody that is trying to, to uh, measure up to who they think they need to be. And there's a major difference. Find out who you are in Jesus Christ today. Go to our website, get this list, download this list, and find out who God says you are through Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. Now, my prayers for you and every other person that walks the face of this earth comes out of Paul's prayers for the Ephesians. You know, Paul wanted the Ephesians to, to have their eyes open, to have their spiritual eyes open to just how much God loved them and just how much He was for them. And I have adopted these prayers for every person that walks the face of this planet, that they could come to understand just those truths. If you can come to understand the love that God has for you, it'll change your life. And then you can go to believing. Go to believing who you are in Jesus Christ. Ephesians 1.15 says, Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I've not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and in Insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope He has given to those He called, His holy people, who are His rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe Him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated Him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now He is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. 
God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ who fills all things everywhere with himself. Ephesians 3.14 says, When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. I pray this in Jesus name. Amen. I thank God that he opens my eyes to that love, that mercy, and that grace, and that goodness more and more every day. And you say, how is that? How does he do that? He does that through his word. Oh, I thank God what he shows me every day of my life in his word. And I pray that you allow him to show you that and just to get in his word and, 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 and soak it in and know, know without a shadow of a doubt that he is speaking to you, just like he is speaking to me. Glory to God. Let's see what God's word has to say today. Father, I thank you and I praise you, God, for your word. Guide me. Use me for your honor and your glory. Help me be the light and the vessel, Lord, that you can shine through, that you can speak through today. Lord, I thank you for all you are doing, all you have done, and all that you're going to do. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. You know, we're going to go into 1 John today, and I I want you to get hold of and grasp what God is saying to us in this verse. 1 John 4 and 9, it says, In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through Him. I want to read that again. (laughs) It says, And this was manifested, the love of, in this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. You say, How in the world are we going to live through him? You're going to live through him, in him, by abiding, abiding in what he done. And and being born again, this is a scripture that that just it 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 just oozes with the love that God has for mankind. You know, Monday we talked about uh, John three seventeen, and and that was a scripture. If I'd have known what I know today, of uh, twenty five years ago. I would have never went down the road that I went down and, and, and backslid and walked away from, from, from church and from a relationship that I had with God. I'd have never walked away from it. But I didn't know that he, was, he, wasn't, he, he didn't come to condemn me because I, I had condemned myself. Uh, self-condemnation is one of the, the worst things in the world that to ever get started in your life to allow to get started because Satan wants to condemn you. He wants to, uh, he wants to push you into a place that, 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 uh, you know, that you get so, so down on yourself that you just throw up your hands and quit. I want to read you another scripture that is really close to my heart because I read this regularly. I mean, I look at it regularly. I'm going to read it to you today. And it's Romans 8 and 1. It says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. That's how much God loved us. 
He didn't send his son in here to condemn us, no. Paul said it. There's no condemnation to those who, who are in Christ Jesus. But when 1 John 4 and 9 says, In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because God sent his only son, only begotten son into the world, that we might live through him. Don't you think it's time that you started living in who Jesus Christ has made you to be? If you're born again today, he wants you to know, he wants you to get hold of who you are in him, not who you are in your self-righteousness, not who you are and how good that you can be, but how good that you are through Jesus Christ and, and his sacrifice, how good he is. Let me say it that way. Uh, you know, there's, there's nothing good in, the, in this carnal flesh that we live in, but in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, oh, my goodness, Oh, my goodness, what are we in this world? 2 Corinthians 5 and 21 says, what does it say? That we are the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, in Him. I, in Him. Says, he says, He made Him to be sin for us so that we might be the righteousness of God in Him, in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. That thrills me to know that. It thrills me to, to be able to proclaim that to you over this podcast. I, it, it, it thrills me to be able to look myself in the mirror and say I'm more than a conqueror in Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, to proclaim what we were talking about yesterday. It thrills me to stand up and know that, that, that the love of God the love of God is manifested in the fact that he sent his only son down here to die on the cross for me, for you, for every living person that walks the face of this earth, for every person that's ever walked the face of this earth. You know, I used to say this a lot. I don't say it very much anymore, but I used to say it a whole lot. You know, God loves Adolf Hitler and Saddam Hussein and Osama bin Laden just as much as he loves us, just as much as he loves an innocent child. I come to that realization a long time ago. The Lord spoke to my heart years ago, and, and I hadn't said it a lot in the, in the fight place, you know, few weeks, but I, I used to say it a whole lot, that God loves the abortion doctor. He told me, he said, son, he spoke to my heart and told me, he said, son, I love the abortion doctor as much as I love the babies they're killing. Now, that says a whole lot. That's really deep. That's really deep in, in what? what we what we walk in today because when you when you come to realize just how much God loves mankind mankind you can come to understand how much he loves you because if you if you love a, a serial murderer a person that has that kills babies for a living if he'll if he'll if he loves them as much as he loves the babies that they're slaughtering every day Oh, how much more does he love you? How much does he love you today? How much more he doesn't love you any more than he loves that person? And that's, that's the good thing about God. He's no respecter of person. And, and I, I thank God for his mercy and his grace and his goodness and his love every day because of that. We can live through him and his sacrifice. He wants us to know that. He wants us to walk in that love and that mercy and that grace and that goodness to, to walk and, and, and have our being in Him and walk through life in Him knowing that we're strong in what He has done, not, the, not our feeble uh, attempt at being good. Because people, I'm going, to, I'm going to be honest with you. We're all going to fail from time to time. We're all going to sin and come short of the glory of God. But I, that, that's the reason Jesus died. He died a perfect death. He died perfect before God as a sinner's sacrifice, as a, a perfect sacrifice, and died a sinner's death so that you and I could walk free from that sin. Oh, I thank God. For that truth. I thank God 
for that, that love that he had for all of us, for all of us. And, and, and I, I'm going to be honest with you today. If, if there's anything that I could ever do to help you see and understand what God's Word says to you, for you, and about you, I want you to know that I'll do everything I know to do to help you find out who you are in Jesus Christ. If I can do anything to help you find that truth out, I want to. And, and I pray that you come to know that. That, that, that if you'll find out who you are in your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, it'll change your life. It'll set you on a path that nobody can push you off of. There's millions out here don't know that. There's millions out here that, that, that just struggle every day of their life because they don't know who they are. I want you to know who you are today. I want you to know without a shadow of a doubt that, that God's love was manifested was manifested toward us because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world that we might live, live strong, live victorious in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Know that today. Believe that today. Understand that today. I want to help you see and find out, see and know who you are in Jesus Christ. The love of God that, that he is shed abroad in this world, in our hearts, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The, the love that he has for the world that we live in, I, there's not a man on this planet can, can put it into words, and I'm not going to attempt to try to describe that love. But I'm going to promise you one thing, that if you'll find out who you are, you, God, he'll give you a glimpse of that love. He'll give you a glimpse of that love. When I, when I first read and understood, I, re, I, I read Luke 15, 11 through 24 a lot in my lifetime. But when I first come to understand and know what that was all about and come to realize that that father and that story was my heavenly father and that that father and that story was, he was, he was uh, more than willing to love me and care for me and, and help me and strengthen me and restore me. When I come to understand the love that he has in that story, and when I come to understand that that that, that love that that father showed the prodigal son God had for me, it completely changed the way I looked at things. I, I was no longer shamed and, and condemned in the 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 way things are and the way things uh, looked in my life. No, no, because I was a new person, that new creature that we've talked about so much on this podcast. I'm going to ask you a question today. Have you been born again? Do you know that, that God's love was manifested in this world, in this world for us through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, coming and dying on the cross for each and every one of our sins and being raised again on the third day for our justification. Do you know that? Do you understand that? Do you know without a shadow of a doubt you're born again? Because if you don't, if you don't know how to be born again today or if you've never been, made Jesus Christ Lord of your life, it's easy. Because if you believe God is who he says he is and Jesus done what he said he's, he done and God raised him from the dead, you're one step away from being born again. All you have to do is confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Oh, I thank God for that truth. I thank God for that opportunity that he gave me. And I'm giving it to you today. Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life. Let him come into your heart and into your life and change you. And then get in this study with us and, and find out who God says you are. Yeah, there's, there's a, oh, there's a, a major difference in, 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 in religion, who, what, the, what religion of this world says you are and who God says you are. I pray today that you find out who God says you are today. Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life today and watch him change your life forever. 
Now, hey, if you're listening to this podcast, go to our website. We want to hear from you. Now, I want to, I want to remind you, all these podcasts have notes. They have notes, and, and I go back through these these uh these podcasts and make sure that you get all the scriptures that are in that podcast and and give you footnotes on them and and and, and illustrations. I want you I want you to get hold of what I'm saying in these in these podcasts. That pay attention to the notes. Take these notes and study these notes out. Print them off. I mean, there's there, there's there's all kinds of resources on our on our podcast, on our website, on our social media pages. I mean, there's all kinds of resources that you can g- draw strength from, and it's not through religion, not through what I'm, what I say, but, but what thus saith the Word of God. Go to our website, get in touch with us. It's the dash prodigalson dot com. Now, if you've got a prayer request, send it to me. I want to send you scriptures that you and I both can stand on and agree on that God is taking care of your prayer request. I want to agree with you according to God's word about that prayer request. I want to stand in agreement with you today. Go to our website. It's the dash prodigalson.com. Now I want to take just a minute and thank all the partners. Partners, thank you for all that you do sowing into this ministry, helping us do what God has commissioned us to do, and that is to give His Word away free of charge all over this planet, all over this planet, for people to be set free through that truth that we are proclaiming out here in this world. And partners, you got a part in that. Oh, I thank God for all the all the, the resources that you're sowing into this, this ministry helping us do just that. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you today. A hundredfold return on everything that you sow into this ministry. Now, if whether you're a partner or whether you're not, share these podcasts on your social media so others can be set free. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com. Now, don't forget, if you're not a partner, pray about becoming a partner. Pray about what God would have you to do to sow into his ministry today. It's the-prodigalson.com.